Hello, everyone. My name is Chris. I'm an applications engineer at AP Systems, and today we will be going over the AP Storage System installation training. The goal of this webinar is to go over the installation process of how do you connect all the equipment together to get a full AP storage solution. First, let's do a quick layout overview of the different components that we will be installing at the home. So starting from the left side, we have our solar system, both the grid only and the off grid solar on the left side. Grid only is gonna go into an AC combiner, which just goes into the main load. But the more interesting part is going to be the off-grid solar going into the backup load center. And the backup load center will also have all of your other backup emergency loads. And that is going to be connected to the backup section on the ELS 5K, which is our battery inverter or the PCS, power conversion system. The ELS 5K is also going to be connected to an auto transformer to provide a split phase output when it is off-grid. The DC connection is going to be done here, where the batteries are going to be connected to the ELS 5K. And the ELS 5K will be connected to the main load center on the grid section. Here are some example installation photos that we have. This is the ELS 5K. The transformer is down here. And these are the two AP batteries uh, that the system is using for stationary storage. Here's another example over here where you have the batteries in this section of the wall. You have the PCS here and then the AP store, uh, the transformer, the auto transformer over here. One other note I would like to mention is this example, I will be going over the AP battery 48 volt, 5.76 kilowatt hour battery. But note that we have a wide range of other batteries that we're compatible with as well. Uh, I would like to also highlight that we are UL9540 certified with HomeGrid. With all these other brands, we have been compatible and tested um, and that they are functional. So first, let's go over the equipment that you should receive when you make the orders. The packing list for the ELS 5K is going to be as follows. You will have the actual PC itself. You'll have a wall-mounted bracket. Three expansion screws. These are mostly for concrete walls. Uh, if you're not having a concrete wall, then you won't need these. There's also a fixing screw that's used to connect the PCS to the wall mounted bracket. You'll also have two 80 amp CTs used to measure production, two 200 amp CTs used to measure consumption, and you'll have an installation slash user manual. This is the packing list for the 5K or the 10K auto transformer. You'll have the transformer itself, the mounting plate, some expansion screws, and the user manual. If you choose to purchase the AP battery 48 volt 5.76 kilowatt hour battery, you will also have the AP battery in the kit, the mounting kit, expansion screws, and the user manual. Note that this is the equipment that the installer, installer will need to prepare and provide for an installation. You'll need to make sure that you have DC wiring that is going to be rated for 125 amps. AC wiring that's going to be rated for 52 amps. You will also need to have Cat5 cable. You may need to have it uncrimped depending on what DC battery that you use. Or you can use the already pre-crimped uh, Cat5 cables. The main thing is to make sure that you have the pins correct if you do this option. You'll also need to provide some wood screws to mount the brackets onto the wall. And any other piping, gutters, disconnects, and breakers that you will need on the system, you will also need to provide as well. Now let's talk about physically mounting the equipment onto the site. In terms of choosing a location, indoor is OK. But the main thing to note is outdoor is also possible as well. The PCS and Transformer are both NEMA 3R rated, and the AP battery is IP65 rated. One thing to note is as long as you have some sort of shelter on the top covering the equipment, so that when you have direct sunlight, you will be blocked, that is going to be fine. So if you have a system that looks like this, it will be okay. 
However, if your overhang does not fully extend over your equipment, then it can lead, then we do not recommend this installation because it's going to be a lot more, it's going to have a lot more exposure to the elements. We also recommend these clearance uh, requirements to be met when you're installing the equipment onto the wall. This is necessary in order for the natural convection of the air can properly cool down the equipment. So this is the auto transformer, the PCS clearance requirements, and this is the AP battery clearance requirements. In terms of how do you physically mount the PCS, you basically take the mounting bracket and mount it against the wall. And then you can take your PCS from above and you slide it diagonally. And you take your fixing screw on the side to secure the PCS onto the mounting bracket. This is how you do it for the auto transformer. Similarly, you have the mounting bracket against the wall. And then you have the auto transformer coming from above and coming down to secure itself to the mounting bracket. One note about the AP battery is that you will need to set the address of the AP battery using a programming tool and connecting it to the RJ45 port in the battery. It is recommended that you perform this operation before mounting the battery, and we will have a separate training session on how to perform this operation. If you're not using the AP battery for your system, you can ignore this part. And just for completeness, this is how you mount the AP battery. You put the mounting plate onto the wall as such, and then you take your AP battery, bring it from the top, and then bring it down. Next, let's go over the wiring on how do you connect the equipment to each other. If you take the ELS 5K and you open up the, the front plate, you will see this is the interface on how you connect everything. And it's relatively simple and straightforward in how the connections are done. Starting from left to right, the connection is as follows. This is the section one is the DC battery connection point. Section two is where the grid goes or the connection to the main breaker. Section three is backup and that goes to the backup service panel. Section four is AT or the auto transformer. Section five is where you connect the battery communication lines to communicate between the PCS and the battery. And this can be done with either CAN or RS-485. Section six is where you connect the PV CTs to measure production. Section seven is where you connect the CTs for consumption. Section eight over here is where you connect the ethernet to provide ethernet connection to the PCS, but that is optional because you can connect the PCS through Wi-Fi. Now here's the same diagram, but translated into a single line diagram. And it's very similar where you have the one is the DC battery over here. Two is grid where the ELS5K is connected to the main load center. Section three is backup where it's going to be connected to the backup service panel. AT is section four where you're connected to the auto transformer. The battery communication is connected here through section five. And six is the PV CTs and seven is the consumption CTs. Just to go over the feeder types, it is important that the cabling that you use meets the correct requirements. The DC battery, make sure that you use 125 amp DC wiring. For the grid, make sure that you use something rated 452. Backup and AT needs to be 26. Five is going to be using the Cat5 cable. The PV CTs are using 80 amp CTs. And consumption, make sure to use the 200 amp CTs. If your solar is going to be larger than 80 amps, then you will need to have a higher amp uh, CT. But if you're same thing also with your load center as well. If you're using because if you're using um, a load, if your home is using more than 200 amps, uh, make sure that you have a CT that's rated for something higher. Now let's go over the actual connections. So let's start on focusing on the PCS to the battery connections. For the DC batteries, it's going to be connected through here. Make sure that you use 100 amp 
the amount of current that's going to be the max current for the EOS 5K is 100 amps. So with a 125% D or 125% rule, make sure that you use 125 amp DC rated wire. If you are connecting multiple DC batteries, make sure that you use something like a DC load or load center to combine the multiple DC batteries. Another advice is to keep the DC lead short in order to reduce voltage drop. If the DC batteries are too long, then you will have larger I squared R um, voltage drop that could cause that could happen from having too long the leads. Furthermore, make sure that you check with the AHJs of the location that you're installing at to make sure that you meet the correct requirements for battery disconnect. And this is the battery communication portion where the PCS is communicating with the DC batteries um, to be able to determine how much to charge or discharge. Now, the wiring is going to be different for every um, DC battery that you use. But on the PCS side, the port that you connect is going to be down here. And the pins is going to be as follows, where if you're using CAN, make sure you use pin 4 and 5. And if you're using 485RS485, use pin 7 and 8. And this is the color marking for the Ethernet cables, and make sure that you follow as such. Now, once again, every DC battery is going to be different. But if you're using the AP battery, this is how you make the connection from the the PCS, the LS5K, to the AP batteries. And that is going to be connected from 7 and 8. If you're doing parallel connection, make sure that you put them all on the same CAN network, which is going to be pins 4 and 5, and make sure that this is the right cabling that you use. Now let's focus on the PCS to the main breaker section, which is going to entail the grid connection and the consumption CTs. For the grid to main breaker connection, the maximum current is going to be 41.6 amps maximum. So make sure to use 52 amp rated wire, which accounts for the 125% rule. The lines that you're going to be using is L1, L2, which is going to be red and black in this image here. White is going to be your neutral, and protective earth is the green line right here. For consumption CT wiring, on the PCS side, you basically will need to connect to connectors over here. And where you're going to be connecting to is going to be in between the utility meter and the main load center. And what is critical is that you have the directions of both of the CTs pointed in the correct direction, which is going to be from the utility meter into the main load center. Another way of thinking of it is the direction needs to come from the grid towards the PCS. And that is going to be true for both CTs. Finally, let's take a look at the PCS to the sump panel section. And that is going to include the AC wiring to the backup load center, the AC wiring to the transformer, and the consumption CT for measuring the PV. For the wiring going to the backup sub panel, it's going to be 20.8 amps maximum. So make sure that you use 26 amp rated wire. And the lines are also going to be L1, L2, neutral, and protective earth. For the PV consumption, uh, or for the PV production CT measurement, your connection on the PCS side is going to be right over here. And where you're going to connect the CTs is going to be as such. The direction of the arrows need to come from the PCS towards the PV modules in this direction here for both L1 and L2. If you have multiple arrays, make sure that all of your PV goes through the CTs. Finally, let's take a look at the transformer connection, and it is going to be done in this section over here. You similarly have L1, L2, neutral and protective earth, and that is going to connect into the transformer as such. Thank you very much. Hope you now know how to install 
the PCS transformer and the AP battery for your system.